Hello, adventurer. You've crafted your characters. Now it's time to teach the model who they are. In this chapter, we'll prepare a strong data set for LoRa training. We'll generate 360 degree angles, remove backgrounds, resize to the right format, caption each image and upscale for quality. Everything you need to get clean, consistent training data. All right, adventurer, we've explored all the ways to create a strong low rad data set. Use these methods to generate a variety of poses and outfits for your creation. Here, we're going to capture our character from different angles and with various emotions using the WAN Fusion X model. This model is super fast and brings quality improvements. We'll have videos generated in just a minute. There are a few important parameters here, starting with image resolution. Resolution directly affects VRAM usage. Lowering it can speed up generation and reduce VRAM needs, but it also leads to loss of detail. I kept the resolution the same to preserve image quality. For this, I configured the setup to target 24 GB VRAM. Our goal here isn't to create long videos, but to capture good quality frames. Generating 41 frames is just enough for our purpose. This configuration works well and finishes the job in about one minute. If you increase the image resolution or the number of frames beyond this, you might run into out-of-memory error. We'll be using the 360-degree rotation LoRa to get shots of our character from different angles and perspectives. Also, what we will do is, I created this emotion list to select randomly from. Here, we're adding random positive emotions to our prompts. You can also include other elements depending on your needs, such as different actions and gestures. Another important thing to note, if you're not seeing visible results from the emotion prompts, it may be because the 360 degree LoRa is overriding them. That's the thing with LoRa's. Some can alter or suppress the effects of your prompts or other LoRa's when they're stacked together. In that case, just bypass that LoRa and try it again. Run it a couple of times to get the shots you like. Another method we can use to generate facial expressions is advanced live portrait. You can select from these parameters. For example, let's increase the smile. You can also adjust the sliders to create the specific emotions and facial expressions you're aiming for. To get results faster, you can set this to run on change, so you don't have to click the run button every time you make an adjustment. Notice that the quality has dropped a bit. Don't worry, we'll fix that with detailing and upscaling workflow. At this point, we've covered every key technique for building a strong, low RAD dataset. Now it's your turn. Start creating a diverse collection with a variety of outfits, poses, and angles. Aim for variety in lighting conditions and backgrounds, too. The more range your dataset has, the better your LoRa will perform. For this first LoRa model we're training, don't worry about the background too much. We'll be standardizing it to white. Right now, our focus is on the character, poses, outfits, and expressions. Once we've trained our first low rag, creating future datasets will become much easier, and you'll be able to build even better ones over time. But for this first round, 15 to 30 high-quality images will be enough. Focus only on the best clean, consistent, and well-composed shots. It should be quality over quantity. Also, you will find a detailed written guide as a Patreon post. All right. Now we're going to bring our images into the run pod environment, where we'll start preparing them for training. I'm placing the images inside the user default folder, but the exact location doesn't really matter. We'll just copy the path from wherever you put them and use it in our workflows. 
If you're transferring a large amount of data, it's better to zip the files first to speed things up. But in this case, since we are just moving a few images, sending them as they are is totally fine. Next, we'll grab the path to our image folder. Just right-click and select a copy path. We'll use this in our workflow setup. Now we're going to use this workflow to process all of our images. It'll remove the background, replace it with white, and resize them to 1024 by 1024, while keeping the original aspect ratio intact. Paste your copied path right here, then set your output path. The workflow will create a BG removed folder inside the output directory and save the images there using the image prefix you specify. Here's what we need to do. First, check how many images you have. If you're starting the loop fresh, be sure to reset the counter. Then enter the total number of images here and run the workflow. It will process each image one by one for us. Alright, let's peek inside the output folder to see if our images are there. And yes, here they are. Our results look great. Now, let's use the full body detailer workflow we covered earlier to restore the details we lost during the WAN video model generation. Now, we'll copy the path to our new dataset and open the full body detailer workflow. Paste the path here, reset your counter, and then we'll run it again to enhance our images. We've already gone over this workflow before, so I won't repeat the details. Our output folder is set here. Let's go ahead and run it. The full detailing process is complete. We've smoothed out that plastic look and brought our images to life with rich, natural detail. Now, let's move on to captioning our dataset for LoRa training. I'll grab the folder path again, and this time, we'll open the Janus dataset captioner. Then, we'll paste our path right here to get started. What this workflow does is loop through each of our images, then uses the Janus Vision language model to generate captions. It saves those captions into text files named exactly the same as their corresponding images, which is really important for keeping everything linked properly. Here, we're appending our LoRa trigger word to each caption. I've chosen to name my character Annabelle, so I'm using this special token instead of typing out the name directly in the prompt. The reason we do this is to introduce a new token, a word the AI model hasn't seen before, so we don't interfere with its existing knowledge of the actual name Annabelle. Also, I'm replacing any words that refer to her in the captions. This step isn't absolutely necessary, but it helps make our captions a bit more consistent and effective. For the output path, we'll use the same folder where we just detailed our images. That way, our final folder will contain both the enhanced images and their matching captions. Now that it's done, let's take a look inside our folder and see the results. Now, we have both of our images and their corresponding text here. Let's zip this folder and download it. Let's open the terminal here and switch to the bash shell. Make sure you're inside the folder with your files. Now, use this command to zip the folder. After it finishes, refresh your folder view and you'll see the zip file ready to download. Your dataset is now ready, polished and rich with variation. With this, you can train a low RAM 
to recall your character's look in future generations. In our final chapter, we'll automate all of this, scaling your creativity with content pipelines and prompt ends.